This is Math Minutes with Mr. White. Hey, thanks for pulling up another video in my Math Minutes series. Today I'm going to be looking at logarithms and their properties. Now, if you're not sure what a logarithm even is, you may want to check out my other video that was called what is a logarithm? And that may help uh, give you a little background on what a logarithm is. Now, if you enjoy this video today, I really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe to my channel, and also put your comments down below. I do enjoy reading those. All right, let's get to the content. So what is even meant by the properties of logarithms? Well, these are the fundamental operations that we are allowed to do with logarithms. And sometimes this is part of simplifying or condensing expressions into smaller expressions. So first, we're gonna look at the logarithm of u times v, and then we're gonna talk about the logarithm of u divided by v, and then we're gonna talk about what if you have a power on the inside of the logarithm, logarithm of u to the a power. There are things that we can do with all three of these expressions, so we're gonna examine each one separately. The first property we're gonna look at is when you have a product on the inside of a logarithm. So in this case, log of uv. It turns out it simplifies to be the sum of two separate logs, log u plus log v. So be careful when you have the multiplication inside a logarithm, it's actually the addition of two separate logarithms. Let's dig into the next property of logarithms where you have a fraction on the inside of the logarithm. So here we have u divided by v on the inside of the logarithm, and that will equal log u minus log v. So remember previously when we had multiplication inside, there was addition of two separate logs. When you have the fraction u over v on the inside of the logarithm, it turns out you get log u minus log v. Let's take a look at an example with actual numbers. Here we have log 20 over 4. Now I know that 20 over 4 is just 5, so log 5, we could type that in our calculator and get the decimal. But I wanted to prove to you that it's okay to use this property of logarithms where we actually subtract two separate logs. So in the calculator we could type log 20 minus log 4. And here you see the calculator where you get the same decimal in all three cases, log 20 over 4, log 5, and log 20 minus log 4. They are the same value, so therefore, this is a perfectly legal move, as I like to call it, in algebra, to go ahead and separate the logs with a minus sign. Let's take a look at the third property of logarithms where you have a power on the inside of a logarithm. So here we have the log of u to the a power. Well, it turns out we can take that exponent, that a, and remove it and actually throw it out front as a coefficient there. And even if we had a product or anything on the inside of the logarithm and the entire product or whatever's inside the logarithm is raised to the a power, you can take that exponent away and put it out front. So here's the property of logarithms for powers. When you have log u to the a power, that's gonna be equal to a times log of u, where a is an, a coefficient now instead of an exponent. Now let's take a look at a numerical example, log of nine to the fifth power. This ought to be the same thing as five times the log of nine. So we can go into our calculator and type it in and you see that indeed they are the same decimal. Okay, so we've tackled the three main properties of logarithms. Now there's two extra things I wanna go over here. And one of them is a special case and the other is called the change of base formula. So let's take a look at those two things now. Here's the first of the two special cases. When you have the log base A of A, in other words, those two things are the same thing. So they could both be five or they could both be X. It turns out if we just think for a moment about exponential form, where the base is the base and answers to log are exponents and the thing inside is actually the answer in exponential form, we would have a to the what power is a? Well, of course, that'd be one. The exponent on the a would be a one, so therefore log base a of a is one. The log base x of x is one. The log base of anything, as if it matches the inside, will be one. Now on the left side of your screen, you see log base five of nine. Now the TI-84, you can actually put in log base five and get the decimal for this. However, this TI-30, not only being a horrible green color, but it cannot do log base five. It can only do log base 10 
and log base E, which is called the natural log. So I'm going to show you a formula called the change of base formula to allow you to get the decimal in both of these calculators. Let's take a look. When you have log base A of B, notice they don't match in this case, we can actually change the base to any base we want. For example, this is base 10 log of B, and that goes on the top of a fraction, and then in the denominator, you're gonna have log A, and keep in mind, that was actually the base from our original problem off to the left. So log base A of B, can you can change the base to something else, whatever is useful, in this case, log base 10, so log B over log A, and often this allows you to put it in a calculator because not all calculators can accept uh, different bases for their logarithms. So if we jump in and look at a numerical example, log base five of nine would be equal to log nine divided by log five. Now let's look at that in the calculator and so that you can agree with me that that is actually a true statement. Log base five of nine is the same decimal as log nine divided by log five. This was called the change of base formula. At this point, let's summarize all the properties of logs that we just talked about. So log u times v, log u divided by v, and log u to the a power, these were all the main properties of logarithms. So in the first one, log of u times v is gonna equal log u plus log v. However, when you divide inside of logarithms, you end up subtracting on the uh, two separate logarithms. So log of u divided by v is actually equal to log u minus log v. Remember, when you have a power on the inside of a logarithm, you can throw that exponent out front and it becomes a coefficient. So you get a times log of u. And then there were two special things I needed you to remember is that the log base a of a is one. So when that base and the inside match, the answer to any logarithm is going to be one. The other rule we went over sometimes is called the change of base formula. And when you have log base a of b, you can change the base to the natural logarithm or the log base 10, whatever you want, as long as you put the log B on the top and the log A on the bottom. So the base on the original logarithm becomes the base or the foundation or the bottom of the fraction. Thanks for watching another edition of Math Minutes where we talked a lot about logarithms and their properties today. Now, remember, if you like this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to my channel and put your comments down below so I can get some feedback for future videos. I really appreciate it. Okay, until next time. This has been Math Minutes with Mr. White.